Hi, I'm Tobin with Mecklenburg County GIS. This is a tutorial for GeoPortal, one of our flagship products and a template we use to build a lot of our web applications. I'll walk you through the basics of using GeoPortal, some advanced techniques, and talk a little bit about the project itself. GeoPortal runs on any modern web browser, like Google Chrome or Firefox, as well as Internet Explorer version 7 or higher. It also works great on mobile devices like iPhones, iPads, and Android devices. Here we have it running under Google Chrome and Ubuntu Linux. Let's start with a quick overview. The first thing you'll want to do is conduct a search. Our search engine is optimized to make searching as easy as possible. Just type the very first part of the address you're looking for and let it do the work for you. To get a little bit of the address in, it will offer a bunch of suggestions, everything it can find that matches. And it does a sound alike search, so if you don't get the spelling quite right, it should still be able to find it. You can narrow down your list of suggestions by continuing to type. See, I've actually misspelled trying here, but it still knows how to find it because it sounds similar. Once you have a list of suggestions, you can select one of those with your mouse by clicking on it. Or you can use the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard and simply hit enter. It'll zoom to the location you selected on the map. And now all of the data tabs on the side will be populated with information about that address. Here we have property information, services, transportation, environment, economic development, schools, voting, community. And the list is added to all the time. So check back often and you might see new data and new things popping up. And that's it in a nutshell. That is the basics of using GeoPortal. Now I'm going to talk about some of the advanced features because there's quite a lot you can do with GeoPortal that you won't see at a first glance. First, the map is completely interactive. You can pan and zoom using a, a mouse wheel. Uh, to pan to, to zoom and a mouse to pan. You can pan and zoom with the controls over on the side as well. Now maps have a base layer and overlay layers. A base layer is what's on the bottom and overlay layers go on top of that. Here we're looking at a Google Maps base layer. You can change it to a satellite view. You can change it to uh, Mecklenburg County's base maps. And you can view an open street map for that area. You can also take advantage of Google Street View. Grab the little fellow over here on the side, drag him to one of these blue lines until it locks in, and let go. And I'll show you a street view for that location. As you move around, or pan and zoom, you'll notice the little person at the top moves around, changes his direction he's facing and moves, so you can see the direction you're looking at. You can also add overlay layers. Those are found under the map controls. And there's lots of different years of aerial photography, environmental layers, pervious surface, a custom map layer, which would include essentially any map layer we've shared for any of our, our mapping systems. For each one of these layers, you can turn it on and change the opacity. Opacity is your ability to see through it to what's beneath. So we've turned on the environmental layers. We'll pick that over here. As we drag this toward the map, you'll see more of the map underneath. Drag it toward the data. The environmental layer is now much darker and harder to see through. It makes it more apparent on the map. You can do a variety of different types of searches, not just address. You could put in a parcel number. You could put in a road or place name. And you can even put in and, and find an intersection. For example, if I wanted to find all the roads that intersect with Ruth, I would type Ruth and an ampersand. It would find all those for me. I can go straight to them. Now, we add features to the system all the time. The easiest way to find those, if you don't notice them yourself, is right on the front, you'll see a What's New link. That'll tell you about all the different things we've added to it recently. This site will also format well for printing. Just use your browser's normal print function and it'll print with a map on one page and the data on the next. Those are some of the advanced uses of GeoPortal. There's quite a lot to it. A recent change uh, you might notice in the hyperlink 
at the top is there will be a hash with a number in it. That is a direct link to the property you've selected. So you can email that link to someone else and they go straight to that property. So we add things all the time. Check back often. GeoPortal is built using free and open source software. Everything, top to bottom. The database uses open source software. The server, the middleware piece is open source software. The client end is open source software. We do that for two, two reasons. One, we found that in most use cases, it's simply the best software available. But also saves money. It doesn't cost the taxpayer a dime to implement this software. In the spirit of open source, we've also shared GeoPortal as an open source project. You'll find links to get to the source code uh, right in the introduction to GeoPortal. And if you're a software developer or a work in a, a different government or a government agency, we highly recommend you take a look at the source code and take advantage of it. And please, if you have any suggestions or patches, send them our way. We hope you found this tutorial helpful and that you enjoy your experience with all of our online products and services.